Uh, all right, everyone, good afternoon. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, another chemistry lecture to go, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, let's first start off with um, some afternoon announcements. Today is the 17th of February. So um, the first thing I want to mention is our homework 13. We're on chapter 13 now. So let's make those problems due next Friday. So homework 13 problems due next Friday, which would be the 26th. So just uh, upload those in and I'll automatically give you the uh, 10 points. Um, if you've already done them, you can upload it and I'll put those 10 points in. Um, start working on quiz two. All right, I'll try to get our tests graded. Um, my student assistant will grade your written exams, he'll grade your quizzes, and uh, we'll see what I can do over this weekend. But for now, we'll forge ahead and uh, start working on quiz two. In essence, don't procrastinate. Um, another thing I want to mention is lab this Friday. If you did the lab last Friday, I wasn't here for that. I had a meeting. Uh, that's good. You're done. So work on your lab report. Okay, with a little bit of a messy lab, right? Real data is messy. Work on lab report for freezing point depression. Okay, I think I should have a walkthrough on, uh, on Canvas uh, through, uh, I think I should have a video to walk you through those problems using your data. And if you did not attend last Friday's lab, attend this Friday's lab. Okay, it's the same freezing point depression. Okay, Larissa told me five people attended, five, so um, there's 13 students in the class, so hopefully eight, the remaining eight, will attend this Friday. And then finally, um, if you're not doing so, if you paid uh, the $30, use that investment to do the clutch prep drills. Uh, watch the videos, they will help reinforce the information. And um, if you complete everything from A to Z, uh, I'll give you some points at the end of the semester all right, for your $30 investment. But make sure, make sure you use it. All right, this is the only thing I can think of for now. And uh, let's just move on to today's lecture. Anything uh, else that people can think of that I may have omitted or forgotten? So for this week, this will be our, on our agenda. All right, um, I decided to do another rate law problem in our notes just to give us some practice. And uh, you'll see this on your exam and probably already on your second quiz. So here is our second rate law problem. Do you guys want the lights off or on? I'm noticing a glare. I'll let you decide, Josh and Adriana. That'll drive you more crazy. Okay, very good. I did it now, definitely. No, it makes it more clear. Awesome. All right, so let's do this problem. By the way, our next lab, not this lab, our next lab after the freezing point lab, you're going to do, you will do this reaction. You will do this reaction and you'll do something very, very similar to this type of problem. You'll actually make your data table do this type of problem. You'll actually do this reaction, I should say. All right, for now, uh, for rate law, okay, so rate law is the name of this uh, problem. Here is our reaction that we want to do the uh, rate law of. Okay, 
So it's going to be rate is equal to K times the concentration of S2O8 minus 2 raised to the power of some X. Okay, it doesn't matter what letter you put that exponent in, times I minus raised to the power of Y. Okay, it doesn't matter what letter you put that exponent. All right, our job here is to get K, rate constant, lowercase k. So this is called our rate constant. And X and Y are called the orders of the reactant. It can be zero order, first order, or second order. Okay. So the order of the reactant. Zero order, first order, or second order. <coughs> okay, don't forget, uh, rate constant is lowercase k, and the units will differ. So rate constant k, lowercase k, units will uh, be different. All right, so let's go ahead and do this problem here. All right, step one, we will compare uh, some experiments. Compare experiments from data table. Okay, so anytime you are asked to compute a rate law, uh, they have to give you a data table. And here is the data table they gave you. All right, so I'm going to compare experiment one and two. Okay, you may compare something different, but for me, I see one and two as something where I could uh, e easily do some cancellation. Okay, there's multiple ways to do this problem, but for me, my eye, I'm going to compare experiment one and experiment two. All right, you can do two over one, but I'll just do one over two. Okay, so here we go. We have rate one over rate two. Okay. And this is the rate law for um, experiment one. K times the concentration of S2O8 minus two raised to the power of X times I minus raised to the power of Y divided by K. Let's do rate two experiment two. S2O8 minus two raised to the power of X times I minus raised to the power of Y. All right, let's plug in numbers here. So rate one is 2.2 times 10 to the minus four. Okay, molar over seconds. Kind of like miles per hour, but it's molar over seconds because this is chemistry, it's a reaction. Rate two is 1.1 times 10 to the minus four. Big M over seconds. Remember, um, big M is moles over liter. Equals K. Uh, uh, concentration of S2O8 rate one, experiment one, that's going to be 0 0.080 big M raised to the power of X. How about I minus for rate one, experiment one? That I minus here is going to be 0 0.034 raised to the power of Y. Okay, don't forget the units big M. Okay, let's do um, K. Okay, we solve for that at the end. S2O8 minus 2 rate 2 experiment 2. Its concentration is 0 0.080. M raised to the power of X. 
How about I minus, rate two, experiment two, it's concentration, everyone see that? 0 0.017, big M to the power of Y. Let's cancel out some things here. Uh, this rate constant K and that rate constant K cancel. The 0.08 to the power of X cancels out with the 0.08 to the power of X. Uh, 0.034 divided by 0.017 is actually 2. You do that on your calculator, 0.034. is 2, and it's, I'm going to make it 2 to the power of y. Everyone see that? The little exponent, I'm going to push it up. So this is 2 to the power of y. 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 is actually equal to 2. I can do that in my head, or you can do it in your calculator. And so what does y equal? y equals 1. Okay. So, in other words, I minus will decay with first order kinetics. So the concentration of I minus will decay with first order kinetics. and all the associated equations, you'll see that you don't have to memorize those equations. You do not. All right, uh, we got uh, this guy. Let's try to get x. Um, I'm going to compare experiment 2 and 3, OK? I'm going to compare experiment 2 and 3. Again, you can do it a little bit differently. Um, so let's compare experiment 2 with experiment 3. So that means rate 2 over rate 3. Equals, rate is equal to K. Uh, let's do the rate 2 rate equation. K is equal to S208 minus 2 to the power of X times I minus to the power of Y divided by, um, it's the same equation except it's going to be experiment 3 concentrations. S208 minus 2 to the power of X, I minus to the power of Y. All right, let's plug in numbers here. Rate 2 is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, it's m over seconds, molar over seconds. Kind of like miles per hour, but again, it's concentration. It's a reaction. Rate 3 is 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4. is equal to K. We, we uh, worry about that later. All right, S208 minus 2, it's concentration for rate 2, experiment 2. And I'm getting 0 0.080 raised to the power of A. Point oh eight oh m raised to the power of X. Okay, raised to the power of X or A. I minus rate 2, experiment 2. I minus rate 2, experiment 2.017 M raised to the power of Y. Actually, Y is 1, but yeah. So. <coughs> All right, rate 3, experiment 3, rate 
uh, experiment three concentrations for S208.160 uh, big M. Raised to the power of X. And then I minus, I minus rate three experiment three. I'm getting 0.017 M raised to the power of one or raised to the power of y, but y is equal to 1, remember. All right, let's do our cancellations. All right, this uh, rate constant k cancels. Uh, the 0.017 to the power of 1 cancels out with the 0 .07, 0 0.017 to the power of 1, excuse me. Right, 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Uh, the units cancel, by the way. So that is 1 half. I can do that in my head. That's going to equal 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.16 is also 1 half, but I'm going to raise the whole thing to the x, right? So this whole thing is 1 half to the power of x. So I've taken that exponent. Instead of individually, I've just moved it up. Once again, 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.16 is 1 half. 1 to the x, 2 to the x is the same thing as 1 half to the x. So here, um, what is x equal to? 1 as before. Very good. So this means. This means that S208 minus 2, I think this is called, um, I forgot the name, persulfate, thiosulfate. So much for a nomenclature. <laughs> uh, this reactant will decay also with first order kinetics. I should get my flashcards. If you had me, I forced, if you had me last term, I made students make flashcards, but obviously. I need to get my flashcards. S208 minus 2 will decay with first order kinetics. Okay. And all of its associated equations, once again, you do not have to know those equations. All right, so we are not done, but we're almost done. Uh, so when you do your problems on the exam and such, uh, we want to complete this, so let me rewrite everything here, what we have so far. What we have so far here is rate is equal to, is equal to K times S208 minus 2 raised to the 1 power times I minus raised to the one power, okay? Right. A lot of students stop here. That's not correct, okay? Uh, we're not done yet. So I'm just going to write here uh, sort of step two here. Find uh, rate constant K. Okay, lowercase, lowercase K. So which experiment do you want to use? You can use experiment one, two, or three. Uh, which one? Did you say three? Three. I think that was your Robert whispered a three. Uh, maybe it's hard to hear with the mask. Okay. So let's try experiment three. All right. We can use one or two. It doesn't matter. So we'll use experiment three conditions. All right, so what is the rate for experiment three? Uh, 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So don't forget the units. Okay, big, big M over seconds equals K. Okay, that's the, that's the big one that we're trying to solve for. Okay, that's the lowercase one that we're trying to solve for, lowercase K. 
Uh, experiment 3, S208, concentration is 0.16 big M. And then I minus is for experiment 3.017 big M raised to the power of 1. Okay, that's raised to the power of 1, that's raised to the power of 1. All right, so let's solve for k. I don't know if you guys know this algebra. I'll skip a bunch of steps here. 0.16 times 0.17, I'm going to push it down, isolating my k. So 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 4, big M, okay, moles over seconds, times 0.16 times 0.017 is m squared. Units are m squared. m times m is m squared. Everyone see that? m times m is m squared. 0.16 times 0.017. Uh, 2.72 times 10 to the minus 3. Point once, I'll do it here. 0.16 times 0.017 is 0.00272. Move that down. M times M is M squared. Move that down. Now we have isolated K. And then this M will cancel out with one of the M's here. Okay, what's 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by parentheses point 00272, 2.72 times 10 to the minus 3. 0.0809. 0.0809. Okay, don't forget the units here. Point zero eight zero nine. What will be the units? This M in the numerator is, gets canceled out leaving one M in the denominator and leaving a seconds in the denominator. So that will be our answer of K. This is what we want to plug in here. Okay, make sure our units are correct. A lot of students don't put in the right units. So let me emphasize units. The units are going to be very different for each problem. <laughs> so our final answer here is going to be rate is equal to k. 0 0.0809 divided by m times seconds, that's our k, times the concentration of S208 minus 2 raised to the 1 power times concentration of I minus raised to the 1 power. And uh, that should be your final answer. We can check to see if this answer is actually correct. So on your exam I or quiz or whatever, future, not just my course, um, if you ever come across this again, we can double check our answer. So um, give me a number, one, two, or three. Two. Two, okay. So let's double check our answer here. We'll double check our answer using experiment two's conditions, as uh, Josh, Joshua suggested. So rate here of two is equal to the rate constant. That's going to be constant, 0.0809 
divided by big M over seconds times the concentration of S2O8. What is that for experiment two? 0 0.080 big M. times the concentration of I minus for experiment two, which, uh, what is that value? 0 0.017 big M, okay, raised to the one power, raised to the one power. Okay, so M times M is M squared. Uh, actually, one of these M's in the M squared will cancel out one of these M's. This will give us M over seconds. Right? This big M will cancel with that big M. All right, here we go. The moment of truth, 0 0.0809. Uh, 0.0809 times 0 0.080 times 0 0.017. 1.10 times 10 to the minus 4. Yeah. This is the right answer. Hooray. Okay. So happy. <laughs> Little things in life. Okay. You can also use experiment one, or you can also use experiment three. Okay, you'll get the same answer. All right. So there are some other example problems that I've done here. So check out those videos. If you want more practice, you'll see it in the quiz. Um, just some final points here, uh, final take-home points. Final points is that these brackets means big M. If I use those brackets, it implies big M. And uh, from our exam, big M is molarity, which is moles of solute over liters of solution. Okay, so brackets is big M, which is molarity. Remember molarity? And another thing here, um, you may see this also. So 0 0.0809 divided by m seconds. Okay, this is the same thing. Same thing as 0 0.0809 m to the minus 1 seconds to the minus 1. I've taken that m and moved it up, making it minus 1. I've taken that seconds and moved it up, making it seconds to the minus one. So you'll see that same thing. A lot of students, uh, because it's been such a long time with their math, they've done it. It's just been decades. Uh, they, they feel, they, they don't recognize th these two are the same things. See, if I take that m to the minus 1 and push it down, it's the same thing as m in the denominator. If I take the seconds to the minus 1 and push it down to the denominator, it's just the same as seconds. I can push it up to the numerator, it's seconds to the minus 1. I can push this big M to the numerator, it becomes to the minus 1. So those are two things that I want you to um, be aware of. Okay, this is actually math. This bottom one is math. This top one is chemistry uh, terminology. All right. All right, like I said, I believe, uh, not, I not believe, next Friday you'll do this type of lab and uh, you'll find it gets a lot more messier. <laughs> These are very clean problems. Uh, you'll see in the lab next Friday, uh, those numbers can get really messy. <laughs> very messy, but um, hey, we're in Chem 2, right? So 
we're not Chem 1 people. Uh, so real data is messy is kind of a main theme of some of our labs that you'll encounter uh, in, in Chemistry 2 labs. All right, I'm going to move on. Oh, by the way, oops, one more thing to this problem, one final point. Uh, what is the overall order of this reaction? Two, very good. Okay, very good, Joshua. The overall order of this reaction okay, is going to be x plus y, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. Okay. That is the overall order of this reaction. Okay. It decays with first order kinetics for S2O8 minus 2. It decays for with first order kinetics for I minus reactant. Both reactants combined. The overall order of the reaction is 2, 1 plus 1. Right. So here, um, what does this all mean? Um, you know, we're talking about decay. Okay, we're talking about reactants going down in concentration as an assessment, as an assessment, as an indicator of how fast the reaction is proceeding. Well, as the reactants go down, there's only one other thing that could happen, and that is the products going up, because that is how the conversion happens in chemistry, reactants to products. But how fast this decays, again, the key word is decay, zero, first, or second order. How fast does this, excuse me, how fast these reactants decay will tell you how fast the reaction is going. How fast the reactants decay will tell you how fast the reaction is going. Okay, decay. So we can have zero order decay, first order decay, and second order decay. All right. So let's look at these equations for this reaction. Okay, so the reaction is A going to B. So that's a very important point here. This specific reaction is A going to be A reactant going to B product. Any other reaction, A plus B to C plus D, it's a little different. Okay, we're just talking about this reaction, A going to B. And um, let's go to our next page here. So these are the equations that um, you can use to tell you what you need to do for decay. Okay, decay. A is going down. Now will A decay with zero order kinetics? Okay, these are the equations. If A is decaying with first order kinetics, these are the equations. If A is decaying with second order kinetics, these are the equations. So uh, first of all, uh, you can bring this to the exam. Okay, so have this by your by your side during the exam. So okay, so make sure you have that with you, or have a copy on the inter on the computer with you. I prefer you have a physical copy; it's a lot easier. All right, so let's say A decays with first order kinetics. I'm sorry, let's say A decays with zero order kinetics. Remember, this is for the equation A to B, nothing more. No other equation, just A to B. Just A to B. Okay, if it's A plus C plus B plus X plus Y goes to W plus G plus S plus T, okay, just A going to B. We're going to use this sheet.
So this is what the decay looks like. Again, how fast A decays tells us how fast the reaction is proceeding. So the decay goes in a straight line. Pretty easy. Concentration over time. And here's the equation here, okay, the integrated rate law. Integrated rate law, that has to do with calculus. It's not a calculus class, but um, this is the equation that you're going to use. All right, again, use this for the exam. You do not need to memorize it. One thing I've encountered with students is that um, this lowercase t means time. Okay, lowercase t is time. And another thing, this little not symbol, you see that little subscript there? Okay. Uh, that means initial at time zero. Initially. Okay. And then you see this concentration of A here. Okay, that's finally. <laughs> Okay, after some time t finally, that's after whatever, 10 seconds, 10 minutes, 10 hours, that's what this uh, A is here. But this is not, which stands for initial, initial conditions. Uh, lowercase k is rate constant, and t is time. Lowercase t is time. Once again, lowercase t is time, seconds, minutes, hours, even years. Okay. All right, so concentration over time. Notice this is a linear decay. Okay, linear decay. So a line has the equation y equals mx plus b. So the, it's a linear form. It's very easy to model the math because it's a straight line. y equals mx plus b. All right, I want to take uh, you guys to look at this little table here. So let's say, remember, our backing up here, this is our equation, A going to B. All right, if I double the concentration of A, what happens to the rate of the reaction? Stays the same. What happens if I triple the concentration of A from 1 to 3? What happens to the how fast the reaction proceeds stays the same, right? So that's a hallmark of first order decay. Okay. Double the reactant. Oh, it's going to go faster. It's kind of like adding a, baking a cake. Oh, instead of one cup of flour, maybe I'll get more cake and we'll bake faster if I add two cups of flour. No, okay. Add two cups of flour, flour still take 30 minutes to bake. <coughs> May not taste as good also. So no matter how much of the starting material you add, how fast the reaction proceeds has no bearing. Okay, that's a hallmark of zero, right? Zero order kinetics. We're talking about zero order kinetics. Zero order decay. Okay, how much of the starting material you add has no bearing on how fast the reaction proceeds. That is zero order kinetics or zero order decay. And then here we have the equation for a half-life, okay, half-life. Remember what half-life is? It's a time. Time, so seconds, minutes, hours, days, or years, time for which 50% has decayed. 50% of starting material has decayed. So 
that's the equation for the half-life. And then huge thing here I want to tell you about units, okay? This lowercase k has units of big M over seconds, molar over seconds. Units of k, rate constant k. And let's go into first order. All right, here's the rate law for a first order reaction. Okay, the exponent here is one. Okay, this is what the decay looks like. Okay, remember decay, we're measuring how fast the reaction goes based on the decay of the reactants. Okay, so the math of this curve is kind of difficult, so we're gonna do something. Um, I don't know how much math aficionados you guys are, but we're going to do what's called a linear transform. Linear transform. We don't have to do that here because it decays in a line, y equals mx plus b. Here, to get this to a line, y equals mx plus b, we take the natural log and plot it over time. Okay. And that gives us our linear decay when we take the natural log of our concentrations. And here is our equations for that. Okay, I like this equation. Um, if you like ease, you can do that, but the uh, same thing. Uh, I like uh, working with the natural logs. Once again, initial lowercase t is time. <clears throat> All right, for a second order, I'm sorry, first order, first order. Okay. For a first order decay, if you double the reactant, okay, how fast will the reaction proceed? Okay, it will double. Okay, for a first order reaction, if you triple the amount of reactant, how fast will the reaction proceed? It will triple. Okay, what happens if you four times the initial reactant? The reaction will go four times as fast. So here you add two cups of flour <laughs> as your starting material, the cake baits, the cake is baked twice as fast. Okay, obviously it's not in real life, but in um, chemistry, um, some reactions have first order kinetics, first order kinetics. Right, and here's the equation for the half-life here. Okay, what's very interesting about first order decay and first order kinetics, um, whether you have 100 grams or whether you have 10 grams, or whether you have five grams, it doesn't matter. Okay, you see how there's a concentration term here and there's a concentration term here. There's no concentration term in first order. Another quirky thing in math. So whether you have 100 grams or one gram, the half-life is gonna be the same as long, as long as you decay by first order. So that's one of the weirdest things in math or in nature, I should say, in nature. That is, once again, if something decays with first order, it doesn't matter your starting material, it will decay with the same amount of time, whether it's a million grams or 0.1 grams. Okay, there's no concentration term here. It's 0.693 natural log of two divided by rate constant k. And our units of lowercase k are right here. Okay, one over seconds, first order. So here we have first order decay. Here on the left, um, we have zero order decay. And now let's talk about second order decay and those equations. All right, second order decay for the reactant. So that order is two. Here is our decay one more time. 
you see this and this graph look alike. Okay, they really look alike. So how do we discriminate against a first order decay reaction versus a second order decay reaction? One more time, we'll do the linear transform, but this time we'll do the inverse. So doing the inverse, if you get the straight line, y equals mx plus b, yes, you have second order decay. So one more time, it's a linear transform, but, but it's not natural log. It's not a natural log transform. It's a one over reciprocal transform. So here we have another linear transform. As before, we have st a straight line, something that's linear. See, we like working with straight lines. Why is that? Because y equals mx plus b. Okay, straight line has that very easy equation. So when we do the linear transform, how do we achieve the linear transform? Once again, it's the reciprocal. If it's second order decay, how will we achieve a linear transform? Uh, we do the natural log again if it's first order decay. Here is that equation here. Okay. Again, you'll have this on your exam. No need to memorize these equations. And once again, lowercase t is time, concentration of A, initial. All right, so what happens if you double the initial reactant, A? How fast does it go? 2 squared, which is 4, correct. Okay, what happens if you triple the initial concentration of A? How fast will the reaction go? 3 squared, which is 9 times. What happens if I quadruple the initial reactant, A? How fast will the reaction proceed? How fast will this go? 16 times, okay. That is a second order decay. Double the reactant, the reaction proceeds faster by the square, okay. Double it, two squared is four, triple it, three squared is nine, quadruple it, four squared is 16, 16 times as fast, okay. For second order decay of reactant A. Here's the equation for that half-life, time it takes for 50% to go. And here's the equation for this. Okay, remember, 1 over m seconds. m to the minus 1 seconds to the minus 1. And this is for second order decay. All right, so make sure you bring this to your exam and use this uh, as an aid. Okay, these are the equations that are boxed that you will need. And we will do some pra uh, problems, practice problems on Friday. So have a good day, and we'll see you all on Friday. Be safe and stay safe, everyone. And I'll have the scans and the recording tonight.